I want to share with you about what hinders the God's mercy in one's life. What can block you? I told you before, if you do not have the mercy of God, it's so dangerous. We have seen from the Bible how many people who had no mercy. They would pray and God would remain silent. Because you need to know, how do I know I do not have mercy? So we go in the Bible and see people who didn't have the mercy. How their lives were. So we find Bartimaeus who knew that he did not have the mercy and cried out in prayer and said, God, have mercy. He needed the mercy. He never said, heal me. All he called out was for mercy. If some of you now, you go before the Lord, you'll be like, God, I need healing. I need deliverance. He never said that. But Mayas, he said, son of David, have mercy on me. And he kept on saying that. People said, shut up. Stay silent. The more they stopped him, the more he shouted, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. He never said, heal me. So when Jesus said, bring me here, when he came, Jesus said, what should I do for you? That's when he said, now that the mercy has come. He said, I need to see. And Jesus said, see. And he began to see. What comes first is not healing. It is mercy. Because I have seen people on the same line, 20 people, all sick. You pray for them, only 10 are healed. The rest are not healed. Because what must come first is mercy. Do you know at the pool of Bethsaida, when Jesus went there, the Bible says, there laid a great number. A great what? Meaning they were not 20. They were not 100. There were so many people, not many, but great number of important, lame, withered, paralyzed, blind, mute. The Bible says a great number. But when Jesus Christ went there, he healed only one and left. It takes mercy. Now you need to hear me. It takes what? Mercy. That's why in the same hospital, there were many people who were sick, including yourself, and only you walked out. Jesus came in the same hospital and healed only one. What was that? So mercy is very important. I'm, I'm talking to somebody here, right? So if you do not have mercy, because people, they forsake the system. The man said, son of David, have mercy. The man called the system. And the system responded. And they said, what are you talking about? Come here. I'm not talking to somebody here. So if you do not have mercy, what happens? You discover that you pray and God is silent. Do not encourage yourself. The Bible says no man must think themselves more highly than they ought to think. Are you understand what I'm saying? You will pray and God is silent because you are having messy deficiency syndrome. You do not have the mercy. Do not joke about it. It's a system. You need to invite it. Just as God has put up a system for salvation, you will never go to heaven until you confess with your mouth. And repent is a system. You will never be advantaged without mercy. Someone say, I need God's favor. Favor will not come to you without mercy. It is mercy that will attract favor. Am I talking to you? So in case you are praying for something and you really are failing to have it, let's Put a pause and go back and see. Maybe I am having a problem of mercy. 
what blocks mercy. So here I am, prophet. Maybe I do not have mercy. What could be? What could be blocking the mercy? Why others make a prayer now and God answers immediately? And others make a prayer and God is quiet. Did you hear that? Yeah. Now we're going to go into the book of Romans chapter 9. All right? From verse 12. It was said to her, the older shall save the younger. Oh, maybe we have people who they don't know this story. Let's start from verse 8. Hear what the Bible says. That is, those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. In verse 9, for this is the word of promise. At this time I'll come and Sarah shall have a son. Hmm. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, for the children, not yet. This is very serious. Children what? Being born. For the children, not yet being born. No, having done any good or what? Uh-huh. Let's read. That what? It is not for works, but of him who what? Now let's continue reading. Then it says what? In verse 12, it was said to her, before the children are what? Are born. It was already dictated. The order shall save the younger. In verse 13, it says what? As it is written, Jacob I have I loved, have loved but, but Esau I have hated. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can you imagine you are born, God hates you? This is God saying, I hate and I love this one. Do you know why? Do you know what attracts, do you know what attracts God's love? No, 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 let's read. We'll have an answer, the next verse. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the God? Certainly, Certainly not. Not. 15, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have, I will have mercy. mercy. And I will have what? Compassion. On whomever I will have compassion. Did you just hear that? So God says, what makes me love Jacob? It's because of mercy. So he says, for me to have compassion, there must be mercy. So this one I hate, and this one I love. Before they were conceived. Now, am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes. So, what could hinder the mercy from coming to Esau? Is what we want to share here. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Adonija. What hindered the mercy? The Bible says when he saw he did nothing wrong but everybody began to leave on the day he was about to be anointed as a king. Everybody began to leave him. So he went in the temple. That was not a sin. To inquire before the Lord. So he bowed before the mercy seat. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? He went on the mercy seat. Right there, he didn't have mercy. The Bible says a soldier came and killed him with a sword right there on the mercy seat. And he died without mercy. What could have blocked mercy? Some of you are having situations which no matter how you're praying, situations are still coming so heavily against you. Dispatch your prayer because mercy is lacking. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, here? Yes. Like, I don't know what's happening with me. The more I pray, the more it is becoming worse. 
Somebody say mercy. I'm praying for my husband. He is now becoming worse. <laughs> but I've been fasting. I've been praying. You are lacking the system of advantage. When mercy comes upon you, God will have mercy. God will look upon you with the eyes of mercy. And he will answer you. For God to answer your prayer, you need his mercy. Somebody say mercy. So what blocks it? Number one, self-condemnation. We got people who condemn themselves, who judge wrongly about themselves. For example, just like I just said now, to say, Papa, I pray. The more I pray, the more worse my situation is becoming. That you are condemning yourself. Because in the vocabulary of heaven, there is no self-condemnation. No matter how dark the world was, God never said it is dark. God said, let there be light. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes. God does not see darkness. And he said, no, you know what? I wanted to create someone like me, but I can't because there's darkness. No, he speaks to his darkness. And that's the vocabulary of heaven. When Jesus met a blind man, he never said he's blind. He said, see. Because in the vocabulary of heaven, there is no self-condemnation. Hello? Now, let me just give you a good example quickly. All right, let's just read the scripture quickly. All right? Let's go to John 2, verse 8. And he says what? They, those who regard what? Worthless idols. Mm -hmm. Forsake their own mercy. Now, I just want you to see something here. All right? Give me um, NIV. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Just you hear that statement? I told you before, the word mercy is associated with the love of God. You cannot separate mercy from love. If it's somebody saying, I'm seeing God's love, he's seeing God's mercy. For God so loved the world. The word love there is the word mercy. Hello? Bye. Now, let's go back to same scripture. All right? In King James Version. It says, those the, that what? Observe what? Lying vanities. Okay, wait, wait. Do you know lying vanities? Lying vanities. It says, those who observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. In other words, if you worship something which is actually not real, a lying vanity is a bit different from the word idol. Because idol is giving a picture of an image that people are worshipping. Lying vanities is when you have got something that you're worshipping it, but it's not real. So you may have a disease that you're actually thinking this one will kill me. Well, actually, you can, you can command it out. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes. So we have people who have judged themselves that this is who I am. I'm a sinner. God will never forgive me. We have people who have looked at situations and have condemned themselves. It's a lying vanity. The Bible says if you do that, the moment you condemn yourself because of fear or wrong judgment of what you're passing through, what you did, or who you are, or what you're seeing, the Bible says you forsake your own mercy. Self-condemnation makes people lose mercy. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yeah. Now look at that scripture. See that scripture there. It says what? They that observe what? Lying vanities mm -hmm. forsake their own mercy. What does that mean? It means that. Can you imagine when people are telling blind Bartimaeus to say, shut up. Who do you think you are? He could have condemned himself and said, who am I? A blind man like me. A beggar like me. I can't even approach Jesus. But he decided to neglect the self-condemnation. He said, I'm not going to have self-condemnation. Because of my situation, 
I will shout them all. Am I talking to somebody here? I want to tell you something, some of you. You think your situation is worse. But I have a message for you. Mercy will never locate people who think they are nobodies. Begin to see yourself on top. And the mercy will locate you and put you on top. Am I talking to somebody here? There was one man who had nothing to do with self-condemnation. His name was David. He said, today, that man, his head will be in my hand. He had a prophecy he will become a king. By Samuel. The man had a prophecy. And he never said, who am I? Some of you like me. The way I am me. Me. You're not even thinking right now of a big, nothing big right now coming in your head. You're not even thinking of buying a, a tower in town. Because you're there like, uh, me. Who am I? Who am I? Mercy will never locate people who have self-condemnation. And it is what blocks mercy. It's what blocks mercy. So I may have somebody right now who, who's thinking like, ah, I don't think it can happen with me. Me. I don't think it can happen. Mercy will never locate people of self-condemnation. Do you know when, 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 when King Saul, he needed the mercy. He went to God and God never answered. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. God never what? Answered. He went to which doctors? He went to prophets. God was quiet. It's a similar situation with David. David, he went to a prophet and God was quiet. He went to God in fasting. God never answered. And the child died. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. But he never condemned himself. Mm-hmm. And God said, this guy, I love his heart. He's a man after my heart. Hallelujah. He never condemned himself to say, I prayed, I fasted. He wasn't fasting. He never ate day and night for how many days? For seven days, the man was in fasting and prayer. He was wearing a sacrum of a king. And God never answered and he never condemned himself. We have people today who prayed for something. And God never answered and they're using that to bring self-condemnation. To say, I prayed, I fasted, but God didn't answer. You are not a candidate of mercy. Change your mentality and your narrative. No matter what you're passing through, it must never define who you are. Somebody say, I'm a giant. giant. Somebody say, I am not what the devil thinks I am. I am not what what my mind tells me I am. I am what what God says I am. Self-condemnation blocks mercy. They that observe lying vanities forsake. They that observe lying vanities. Can you imagine God is saying this about you? But your mind, you know the devil comes in your mind and begins to give you so many wrong ideas. You see, you are rejected. People don't love you. You see, you see. So you begin to observe. To observe means that you sit and you begin to consider those lies in your head. And in your mind, the Bible says you forsake your own mercy. Oh, yes. How many are following? Yes. Number two, self righteousness. Self righteousness. Where some like, ah, me, I'm okay. Spiritual, I'm fine. No, it's a good confession. In fact, we are all fine. We are God's righteous. And we are righteous before the Lord. But hear me. Hear me. And I want you to hear this. The fact that we know we are righteous. And the fact we know that God forgave us. Does not make us to create a self-righteous mentality. Hello? Where God is speaking to you. To change, you need to listen and change. Don't keep on saying, ah, no, me, me, things are okay. 
things are fine. Let me go into the scripture. Luke 18 from verse 10 to 14. See this. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithe in all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exhorteth himself shall be a best, and he that humbles himself shall be exhorted. Say mercy. Mercy. Did you see that statement? A Pharisee and a publican. And nobody, he went before the Lord and said, another one went, the Bible says he raised up his hands, oh, shaka paraba. Oh, Lord, I thank you, you know I give my tithe. We have people like that. So me, I give tithe. And, and the man was even more better than most of you. Do you fast every week? This man was fasting every week, not once, twice. And was tithing. More better than some of you. He was a tither. He was a prayer of man. He was living in fasting and he was holy. He said, God, you know I've done nothing wrong. And another man came there and he said, God, have mercy. I'm a sinner. I have failed before you. The Bible says God's eyes went to the one calling for the system. It doesn't matter how fast you do, how giving you give, but there will be no God's eyes if there is no system. The man decided to call the system. He said, God, who am I? He said, I stand in your presence as a sinner. Have mercy on me. Self-righteousness. Am I talking to somebody oh, yes. here? In fact, maybe even this man who was saying, God, have mercy on me. He was even a giver. He was also fasting. He was, he just didn't say these things before the Lord. Am I talking to you? Oh, yes. So when you are in the presence of the Lord, if there are things you know you need to settle them with God, settle them. The man decided to call for mercy and mercy located him. Self-righteousness. So you'll be praying and think things why are things not moving? Sometimes you are self-righteous. It blocks mercy. I pray for you. I may God help you tonight. I, I say may God help you tonight. I Somebody say amen. amen. Number three. Believing in your works. Believing in your works. Believing in what? In your works. Believing in your works. Some of you believe in your fast. Some of you believe in your giving. And you think these things you do, they're the ones that will change your life. This is why we have many prayerful people who are broke. We have more people who are faithful to God and they're struggling. Because they think it is what they do that brings mercy. It's not. The same scripture just read in Romans 9 from verse 15. It says, for he says to Moses, mm -hmm. I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. Mm -hmm. And I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Verse 16. So then it is not of him who wills, 
nor of him who runs. It's not about works. But of God who shows mercy. It has nothing to do with running. Oh, I'm running with this thing. I'm trying to do this. It's nothing to do with that. All you need is mercy. Do you know, there were people who were giving in church. And Jesus invaded people's church and entered and stood like this. It wasn't his church. He just went into somebody's church and stood on the offering basket. And people were giving. And he said, this one who gave the little has given more than you who are giving millions. This thing you can't understand them. It's about mercy. I pray that you receive the mercy of the Lord. May God's mercy begin to work for you. May the mercy begin to touch your lives and change your lives completely. Some say, I receive the mercy of the Lord. The Bible says it's not about who runs. It's not works. Can we go to number four? Now, number four. Unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment. So sometimes people think I'm going to be confessing about prosperity until prosperity comes. On the other hand, they are failing to let go an issue in their hearts. Forget about mercy. The Bible says forgive so that you can be forgiven. Meaning, God is also holding it. Saying, the more you don't forgive, I will not, for, for God to forgive you, he must have mercy on you. He says, I will not. So, until now, I'm failing to forgive. And you're wondering in church, and your life is not changing. It could be maybe somewhere you are failing to let it go. Or maybe somewhere in your life there is self-condemnation. Or maybe somewhere around you, there is self-righteousness, unforgiveness, bitterness. Sometimes it's not just about unforgiveness. Maybe you have nobody who you are holding anything against, but you are bitter. You're just bitter. These are things which are blocking people from receiving mercy. God says, I cannot show you mercy because you are, you are so bitter. Don't let things, don't, don't be bitter. Bitterness. And the enemy knows, the devil knows how to mess you up. The Bible says when, when, when Balaam, are, are you hearing me? Balaam said, you know what? The only way to curse those people, are you hearing me? He said, send fallen women. Send foreign women because their own God told them not to marry women from other countries. Because God told the people of Israel, do not marry a foreign woman. God said that. Because God wanted them to maintain the pure blood that will produce Jesus. So he so said, send them what? Who gave information to Balaam? That God would be mad. He said, the moment those women go, and their men begins to date these girls. Says that their own God will be angry. And their own God will punish them. You do not have to hire me to kiss them. God will be mad. That's what the devil does. So he knows to say, okay, if this woman, she receives mercy, her life will change. What must I do to her to block the mercy? So the devil will not go to God and say, don't give this woman mercy. No. What the devil will do, he will bring a spirit of bitterness. All of a sudden you are bitter. Your own God will not show you mercy. It won't even take demons to do it. Your own God will not show you mercy. And then God says, I hate this one. And I love this one. I'm not talking to somebody here. Oh, yes. Let me show you another issue. Unforgiveness, bitterness, be careful of these things. Let's go to 
Hosea 6 verse 6. Hosea 6 verse 6. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You know what that means? The word mercy is very important. So people were coming to God with their sacrifice on the altar. Are you hearing me? But in their heart, they, they were not merciful to others. God says, no, 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 wait. Leave your, leave your sacrifice. Take it. Take it. I don't need it. Be merciful to others. I desire that you show mercy to others. Forgive others. Don't be bitter. Don't be angry with others. And then you can come and give. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes. So, unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness can block to a level where God can even tell you, come, come. We will look, how much have you been giving all these years? And this is all your money. Go back. We don't need your, your money here. Hallelujah. Resentment. I don't know what this man is doing. Maybe he has got an issue. Resentment. Unforgiveness, bitterness. Lastly, you ready for this one? Failure to give and to show mercy. Failure to do what? To give and, and to what? And to show mercy. Matthew 5 verse 7. Matthew 5 verse 7. That's the most important scripture in this teaching. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful. For oh, they oh shall obtain mercy. yeah. Shall obtain mercy. Yes, yes. The word mercy comes from the Greek word eleos. 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 E -L -E -O -S. E-L-E-O-S. Eleos. The word is mercy. It means Eleos. It comes from an olive tree. Oh, I, I, are, you, are you here, somebody? It originates. You can Google it. Where it comes from. Just write Eleos. It will tell you that this word comes from a tree of olive. Why? It is the only tree which is called a tree of mercy. Because in those days, when one is sick, they used to take olive oil until today, right? If you have a wound, a dry wound, they say, anoint it with oil. I'm not talking to somebody here. So the wounds in those days, they were treated by the olives. So it was called a tree of mercy, Elos. For it treats it is a merciful tree. Elos. Now the Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain. So you may be wondering, I fast, I pray, I go to church, my life is not changing, God is not hustling. Maybe God, all he is looking for is for you to start being merciful, become a giver. Be a person who is merciful. See others with the compassion. The Bible says the merciful shall obtain mercy. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? Yes. So you may be a man of God, a woman of God, and praying and fasting and nothing happening to you because you are not merciful. Why did God hate Esau? And why did God love Jacob? Do you know how much money, how much items, did Jacob bring to give his brother? Do you know? The Bible says he, he took so much items. He took so many things to go and give. Do you know how many times did Jacob raised an altar and gave God on the sacrifice? There is no any scripture that says Esau went and gave God on the altar. God says, I hate this guy. 
He never. Jacob, he even went and, and, and built an altar and he said, this altar is called El Bethel. Because I recognize the God of this church. I recognize the God of this house. He brought giving in the same place where, he got, where God spoke to him. He took back his giving and raised an altar on the same place. And he said, it is the God of this place. The God of this house that made me. God said, hey, I love you. I love you, Jacob. I hate that guy. <laughs> the other guy never acknowledged nothing. So we have people in church today who they got a job, but they never even acknowledged God. They never even came back to church and some giving because God did this to my life. There are people who they were not even pregnant before. God made them pregnant. They never came back to recognize their altar. Because I say, blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. So God sees the future. He already saw the life of Esau and the life of Jacob, how they will live. And he said, with this, this life standard of Esau, I don't like him. With this life behavior, this guy, he doesn't even give. They had so many uh, gods. So many at the house. The father says, I'm hungry. The guy says, ah, I have to go to the bush. <laughs> Jacob just went out, took a goat, killed it, took the meat and gave the father. The father said, come, let me bless you. <laughs> why are you telling, why are you telling, oh, hey, Papa, when, I, when God gives me a breakthrough, I want to be a kingdom of financial. When? Take what you have right now and give it. Like, ah, I have to go to the bush to hunt. Jacob said, ah, we have a God at home here. <laughs> Took a God, killed it. He said, this is what I have. He said, dad, you wanted the meat. This is the meat. The father said, kneel down. He said, I bless you, my son. <laughs> By the time the guy was coming back, the blessing was gone. Why are you waiting? I'm, I'm waiting to be a millionaire so I can support the ministry. God says, I hate this guy. <laughs> Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain. There are people who you meet, they are poor, and you have something. Why don't you give them? People wonder why I give all the times. Trust you me, I can have money, and the money can finish it because of giving. And people wonder, why is he giving? Like, I know the code, the secret code, the password. Oh, yes. The passcode for mercy mm -hmm. is being merciful. So you'll be like, I've been praying and nothing is changing. Simple. If you see certain people with so much mercy, it's because they are merciful. <laughs> Blessed are the what? The merciful. The merciful. So when you see me, People who know me, they will tell you. When you see me, all the times I'm giving, I'm telling you the truth. Be merciful and I will show you mercy. It blocks mercy. We have people today who don't have mercy because of self-righteousness. Others, self-condemnation. Others, bitterness and forgiveness. Others, they believe that their works will help them. And others... They don't show mercy. Or they are looking for God have mercy on me. No. The secret of the things of the kingdom are simple. Give and it shall be given back to you. Forgive and it shall be forgiven. Be merciful and it shall have mercy. In the same measure, shaken, press down and run over. Am I talking to somebody? So, Look at these things and begin to see where am I failing? Am I not merciful? I am merciful. I am under self-condemnation? No. Maybe it's in bitterness. Am I there? No. Maybe it's on what? Works. I believe so much because I'm saving God and my life must automatically change. No. I've been praying for two days. 
No. Not even your fasting will save you. It is the mercy. You can do your 40 days fast, but if there's no mercy, in that 40 days fasting is useless. A woman just touched Jesus like this, and she was healed. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. Just touched Jesus. Another woman came, and Jesus said, I don't, I, I don't need you. I don't give my food to dogs. <laughs> Wait a minute. Was this the only person who was not from Israel? No. Jesus had healed so many people who were not from Israel. But there was no mercy. And the woman said, even dogs eat from the remains that falls on the table. He said, Master, have mercy on me. And she worshipped him. <laughs> Say, woman, your child is delivered. Uh, system. system of advantage. Oh, yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes. So sometimes you stop these things where you just, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray. Oh, Lord, change my life. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How is your life? How is your life? Speak to the Father, Lord, any place I have wronged against you, forgive me. Do not have self righteous Forgive me. When you, when you confess yourself, it's different when you stand before the presence of the Lord. Sort out issues. Are you a giver? Are you merciful? You need mercy. Why can't you humble yourself and say, Prophet, I believe that if you pray, God can open my life. I pray today that anything that you, is blocking you from receiving the mercy must be broken in the name of Jesus. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet.